So to give you a bit of background, um, in about 2003, I, I became very frustrated with um, traditional media. Um, I've been hearing sort of pockets of the same discourse happening around raising funding, um, distribution, broadcasting, where does the funding come from, how do I get the funding, and how do I get to make my film and put it out there. Um, and I really felt, kind of having reached a glass ceiling in my, in my career, is that I jumped into mobile. Because for me, mo the mobile phone, and certainly in an African context, is and will continue to be the platform of choice. In other words, it's, it's what everyone has in their, in their, in their pocket. Um, all the time, and it's always on, and it's in my space, it's, it's, it's my personal device. And that was the platform I chose to jump into. And at the time, everyone thought I was completely crazy, which I was, and it's always a good flag for me to jump in if someone says that. And um, really focused on technology, not knowing very much about technology. And understood that if you put the right content onto a platform which is ubiquitous, it has an enormously powerful place in terms of transformation. And that really was the beginning of, of my kind of career into mobile to entertainment. But before I go into that, I just want to give you a bit of context about with, within the African market. So the African landscape, just so you can get a sense of where I'm, where I'm kind of coming from, is that we are basically experiencing an environment which is completely leapfrogging any fixed landlines. And most importantly, we're experiencing an environment which is leapfrogging the internet, um, as we classically know it. So we're missing out on an entire computer generation. The first time that most people in Africa are going to experience the internet will be on a mobile device and not on a computer, which affects some of the conversations that have been coming up, which John brought up around navigation, design, heuristics, and ergonomics, because we're all we're kind of used to the mouse and the, the, the keypad. That will no longer be the case. It's now on a mobile device. We have over 104% penetration in South Africa, and that's pretty much the same throughout Africa in terms of mobile penetration, versus only 10% of people who are actually online. Um, as you can see, it's, it's, a, it's a device, it's a, it's a tool that is increasingly pivotal for, um, for, communi for our communities, for communication, entertainment, and most importantly, for building community, a tool for building community. 50% of our population is under 24, which is important to remember because it, it's, what drives, it, what's what drives business. Some of the other areas are important to note because of the data consumption. And that means that data consumption on the mobile phone is being driven up primarily through video, which is very interesting. And as you can see, our increase in data went up by 331% last year, which is extraordinary, with one of the top 10 in the world. And there's about a 10% increase, and that, that number is very conservative, of number of users on getting online on, onto their mobile device. So it just kind of gives you a bit of, a bit of context around how pervasive the mobile phone is, especially when it comes to broadcast, like television or radio. Very few people have access to television or radio, but they will certainly have access to a mobile phone. Um, what we've said here is that um, so even though there's this, this huge growth in mobile phones, the one thing that we became very aware of um, is that even though the phone is, is pervasive, the kind of content that was on that mobile device was completely irrelevant to local communities. There was nothing significant in terms of culture, race, language. It was often Eurocentric or brought in from America, licensed material which had little to no relevancy at all to our African market. Not only that, but there was no, if someone was going to create content, there was no kind of central distribution mechanism. So that was also important, which was the kind of the, the background to where Boza is. Because that kind of was, uh, became quite a passion for me of like, where is the local relevance? Where's the cultural relevance, even though we've got this ubiquitous device? So we started to work with um, two townships in, in South Africa, one's in, outside of Cape Town called Kailicha. The majority of people live in shacks, very little infrastructure, and the other is in Alex, which is outside Johannesburg, which is the oldest township um, that South Africa has. And we started working with um, filmmakers who have never, or rather individuals who've never had um, access to film. 
which kind of leads me on to quite a contentious issue is that I feel quite strongly that film and filmmaking is actually pretty much an elitist um, environment. So it meant that there was this huge creative economy within an African market that was completely untapped. Because what ended up happening is that the same people go to school, who get to learn about film, who chase the money, who go to the broadcaster. So it still remained a small pocket. So by going into the townships, we started to access this incredible creative economy that had never had access at all. Access to funding, access to technology, or access to broadcasters. So by working closely with them and putting a mobile phone into their hands and taking them through a very simple five-day process on how to tell a story with a visual medium, it unlocked their own personal stories. So we basically did a proof of concept where we worked with um, a variety of different filmmakers and we only produced seven minutes of content. And in seven, with seven minutes of content, we went live using that mobile content made on the mobile phone, distributed on the mobile phone, and in two days we had over 40,000 users. And in the first month we had over 170,000 users, which indicated that there was an enormous appetite for locally relevant content. Content that's made by me, for me. I can see myself and I can see my own culture being played out for me. So that basically is where Boza, Boza was, was born. And Boza is kind of, it, we, we've coined a new phrase called a Moby Hood. And it's basically allowing communities and neighborhoods to become, or to be brought together, enabled through the mobile phone. And Boza is a township slang word which means I'm taking ownership of my own life. I, I am my own boss and I can overcome any obstacle. So it's a, it's, a, it's a township slang word that's used all the time. And basically we work all the time with our users. We assume nothing, we listen to our users all the time. And they basically came up with this word because they felt that we were suddenly giving them access to empower them in their own worlds and to basically give them a sense of being able to have a voice. So the important thing about Boza and what we're doing is that even though we're, we're working with filmmakers to unleash their own stories, the critical thing behind that is we're also very cognizant of what has happened in the past around documentary filmmaking. And that is ordinarily people come into community to tell a story. And there was a big backlash um, from, from communities of like, it, it's, a, it's enough. It's enough of brands coming to take advantage of us or NGOs coming to show us A, B, and C, but then going away when there was no additional funding or people coming to tell our stories. And what kept on coming through and through with communities was that we want to tell our own stories. It's coming from the inside out. And that's essentially what Boza is doing, is that we're allowing people within communities to tell their own stories for the first time using a mobile phone. We then come in and give them a distribution platform. So it's moving it away from the broadcaster and giving them the power to, to distribute. So it means that people are now producing and then on the other side is that people can now consume content that is relevant for them. And that's really what Boza does. Um, and before I go on to this, the, the next slide, so essentially we, we've been doing big campaigns in all, in all the townships and I'll show you some of the, the pieces. Um, but I just wanted to take you through a couple of pieces that highlight the power of the content that is being, that is being developed. So this piece of content was um, developed by a woman called Amanda. And Amanda, this, it was for uh, the, a particular festival and we took her through a five day uh, process of shooting films. She used a BlackBerry 8520, which is a, an, older ver a, an older BlackBerry, so it's, it's definitely not an up-to-date phone. And everyone in this film is within her environment. No one's an actor or an actress. She's never made a film before. And I personally think it's an incredibly powerful piece. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 
So why I wanted to show you that piece was for a variety of reasons. One is that it just shows the enormous kind of potential of unlocking stories. Um, and Amanda, what happened now with Amanda's channel, so what we do on Boza is that we basically, as I said previously, is that we're a distribution platform. But we're not just a, a, a classic distribution as in a broadcast uh, mechanism. As I said on Monday night, is that I feel very passionately and strongly that the mobile phone is not a broadcasting mechanism, but a communication tool, which means that there has to be a point of interactivity and plays into the consumer who wants participation, who wants engagement. And so what we are building with our distribution platform is the capacity to build social networks. So with Amanda's uh, film, she has her own channel. So we're now giving artists their own channels. So every artist has a channel on our distribution platform. And what happened with Amanda's content is that for the first time she's unlocking these stories which are actually stories that a very large majority of women unfortunately are experiencing. So she now has developed this community of often single mums who are looking for support and they start to support one another, they share stories with one another. So through unlocking this kind of content there are, there are communities unfolding which are basically feeling, oh, there's other people like me. So hers is a very powerful channel that, that, has, that is starting to um, come through. This um, is also done on a BlackBerry 8520 um, and was done by a...